This is Katie, co-host of Coffee with Keith and Katie. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. This is Liz Colburn, host of the Morning Uplift here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you are done with this episode, I hope you'll come back and check out my show, The Morning Uplift, where we talk about finding your beauty in the journey. A new show comes out twice a month on the first and third Mondays. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of The Morning Uplift. Thank you again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. Welcome to Beauties and Headcanons, where we're nerdy and you probably are too. This is Emily, and today I'm here with Lindsay, and we're here to talk nerdy to you about a convention that Lindsay got to go to as a member of the press, like representing our show. So we're super excited that she got to do this. She went to Anime Milwaukee, because that is local to her, and I am really excited to hear what she has to say about it, because she's been to Anime Milwaukee before, but was, well, and I'll let her explain more about what she did, but she was part of the staff in previous years, and so now she got to actually go as an attendee as opposed to a volunteer or an assistant. So, um, yeah, Lindsay, what did you get to do? Yeah, so just to follow up on that a little bit, I have been to Anime Milwaukee for at least two years, maybe three years. I think we we went last year. Um, just for fun, uh, but only for a day or so. And in the past, I've been able to um, walk around the convention with a red staff shirt on, um, answering questions, I'm helping out customer service. At some point in time, I was just making sure that um, my director ate and drank throughout the course of the day. Um, Always useful. (laughs) Very useful. (laughs) And so it was very interesting to me uh, this year to be able to go as press because I actually worked in the press booth at some point in time to hand out badges and to help people uh, figure out where to sit and to talk with the the voice actors and make sure everyone uh, knew where they were going, that kind of thing. So this was cool to go up there and tell them I was a member of the press and to get my badge that way. It was very different for me. Um, we, I had ordered one of our awesome uh, Beauties and Headcanons t-shirts that we now have out, the Talk yes. Nerdy to Me. Uh, ah. So I was super excited to get it in time, but it didn't come in time. Ah. So I was wearing a 2017 Anime Milwaukee t-shirt instead. Um, but I did have my Beauties and Headcanons business cards with me at the time. I didn't get to hand any of them out, though. Uh I, I missed okay. out on a few opportunities because other things came up. We were playing uh, Jenga with some con goers and I got to ask some questions as to what people were enjoying about the convention this year. And so the, the experience was different for me because I got to spend time with Aurelia. I didn't have to worry about making sure people knew how to get to places. Although I was asked how to get to registration at some point in time. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I gave the right directions. <laughs> <laughs> so this year, Anime Milwaukee, I did go to the charity ball. I've never been able to go to that before. For some reason, I always had other things I was doing on Friday night. The charity ball this year was to a charity called Generations Against Bullying. And I actually personally know the person who coordinated this. He is our editor for our show um, with the wonderful, Public House Media. the amazing, <laughs> the wonderful, the amazing Vic. Um, yes. <laughs> so I did want to say a little bit about the uh, found the, the group that is in charge of Anime Milwaukee is called ECPS. They um, hosted this masked charity ball, although masks were optional. You could wear them or you <laughs> could not wear them, whatever you wanted. And, you know, some people's uh, cosplays included masks. We even had some dinosaurs show up, so they were, you know, full masked. Um, That's awesome. But that was on Friday, (laughs) and it was in the Hilton Crystal Ballroom. There was, um, I think, over 50 in attendance, a little bit less than 60, and tickets were $15. We had a great turnout as opposed as you know, compared to previous years. 
And it was really cool because this was one of the first years that they had a, one of the first years, hopefully next year they'll have it as as well because it was such a hit, but they had a ballroom dance teacher who is a local Milwaukee guy. And he taught some salsa and bachata and cha-cha, I think, and maybe even some rumba and swing and all kinds of really cool stuff. He was a very versatile teacher. I think I can name drop him. His name was Joey Stone from Joey Stone Music. And he had um, you know, music that he played. He was told repeatedly by myself and by Vic that he was allowed to leave if he wanted to. <laughs> like, <laughs> we only have you for an hour, so you're welcome to go whenever you're ready. And I think he stayed till uh, after I left, and I left at about 10 p.m. So um, that's awesome. I heard that, that he had like a really a good time. Of, yeah, yeah. It sounds like a lot of fun. And people were really into it. You know, they were they were learning something that they, they weren't used to. And the lessons were free. So the idea behind Generations Against Bullying is that they um, help save lives by offering community services to help turn someone who's a bystander in a bullying situation into an upstander, which is someone who, when they see bullying happen, they, instead of just standing by, they decide to take action, whether that be speaking up or getting help. Um, there's proven, you know, scientific surveys that say that once someone does speak up or or get help, um, bullying is like 90% more likely to stop wow. and not to happen yeah. again. Um, so you know, there's very tragic um, results when it comes to bullying. There's cyberbullying. And, you know, when we were younger, bullying stopped at school. You went home and you left it at school. And right. mom and dad... And your family and your friends, they they were there to support you. But now with social media infiltrating every part of our lives, children, uh, teenagers, young adults, everyone is just bombarded by the aspect of, of bullying in every aspect of their lives. So it, it comes home with you. It's on your phone. It's in your head. Mm-hmm. And there's so many statistics of, of people who at the their youngest ages are now taking their own lives and hurting themselves because of of this happening to them. So generations against bullying really is standing up against those statistics and it was really neat because I had the great opportunity to meet a couple of the the people on the board for generations against bullying. There was a gentleman named James Dean. <laughs> That's uh, the James Dean. <laughs> And he he plays on that too when you meet him. Um, That's funny. And his colleague Linda and they uh, really got to know me and got to know Vic and got to know a lot of the people at at the convention as well. They had a uh, booth right out front of the vendor hall. So there's there's this line of uh, tables of other conventions and other um, promotions that you know you can win a prize, you can pick up a wristband or a magnet or whatever. And they were right out front and they, they really um, were, were talking about, you know, the, their services that, that you know, they, they helped to shift the culture of bullying into a culture of love and acceptance and encouragement. And that's really what like Anime Milwaukee, any convention of geek culture that you go to is kind of about. And I think that's like the coolest thing, um, especially for them to have been there, that they were able to um, kind of just infiltrate into this this culture that's already about encouragement and love and acceptance. Yeah. They, they expressed great support with anime Milwaukee. They hope to return in 2020 and um, it's really anime Milwaukee is, is and, and generations against bullying. We're talking about how they, you know, hope to just maintain a safe place and inform people about just the never ending issues of bullying. Um, you know, I have an 11 year old daughter, so this is kind of like a big deal to me. I, um, it's really important to me because you you never know how to approach that topic with um, young people. So last year, Aurelia had a friend who would always tell her that she couldn't be friends with so-and-so if she was going to be friends with her and they couldn't hang out together at recess if she was going to talk to so-and-so. And that always really like left an ugly chord in my heart. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know how to explain it to her. And we were standing right outside the Generations Against Bullying uh, table. And they had a section on there that talked about what kind of bullying was what kind of bullying. And they talked about relational bullying. And of course, I read it and I made Aurelia read it. 
And I was like, does this sound familiar to you at all? And she covered her mouth and got real quiet. And I was like, I like mean, nail on the head. Much? Yeah. <laughs> she was always telling me these things, you know, that so-and-so is mad at her today and tomorrow there'll be buds again. But it's so fickle, you know, growing yeah. up is so fickle. It was fickle when it we were is. young. It's even more fickle now. Right. And it's, it, it, kids are so fickle. It's just so, so it's just so, so. And <laughs> for, for lack of a better way to put it. And I just think it's so interesting to me that, that they were able to hit it like that with her because it really is relational bullying. You, you can't, people can't tell you who you can hang out with and who you can't right, that's, and who you yeah. can be friends with and who you can't. And putting words to it was really paramount for her because she was able yeah. to say, Oh, you know what? This is, this is real. This is yeah. like, being able to identify what the problem was, right? But that it was a problem. And even small. being, you know, a by, uh, an upstander in your own life, because she yeah. is so used to being a bystander in her own bullying situations, you know, mm-hmm. being not okay with someone having that kind of uh, direction over her life, but also not knowing how to stand up to it. And someone had called her a bully, uh, sometime in the past month or so. And I, you know, told her, I was like, Oh, kind of sounds like he's calling the kettle black there. Uh. So it it was, it was really neat to see them and to see how um, involved they are. They were both, um, older people, but they have a whole ton of different ages in their group. Mm-hmm. And they they do assemblies and puppet shows, and um, the funding go went completely to um, the efforts that they have in Milwaukee to combat bullying in, in all cool. children's lives. Yeah. Uh, so the way that that comes into a convention is really interesting to me because. Anime Milwaukee and, uh, you know, I've only ever been to Anime Milwaukee. I am hoping to go to very many more conventions this year. Oh, that's a lie. I've been to TeslaCon as well. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> yes. Um, but the, the culture there is a little different. But with Anime Milwaukee, there's a group of people who are so very diverse. You know, I sat and played Jenga with a father and his son. Um, he was dressed as Link from Zelda and his son, I think was wearing a Spider-Man costume or maybe Deadpool. And they sat and played between those two. Yeah. Is there there a way to distinguish besides the fact that one of them is black and red and the other is blue and red? Yeah. Well, this, this (laughs) little boy didn't have any blue on, so he must've been Deadpool. He might've been Deadpool. Yeah. But he was so young that I, I found it hard that he, hard to believe yeah, that he would be like, I don't know yeah, I don't know I, I surprisingly <laughs> have seen a lot of Deadpool stuff for kids like ages 7 to 12 I'm like really yeah that's really interesting I've, I've to me I've been surprised by that but mm-hmm. anywho um but I did think it was very interesting you know that that they were there playing Jenga with me and Aurelia and then we had all kinds of other young teenage girls and 20 something men and you know all races were there as well I mean just an immense spattering of different kinds of people and and I think that's what really made me so excited about this kind of thing geek culture or or you know nerdy pop culture whatever you want to call it because there was something for everyone they had a room for tabletop gaming and we did spend a bit of time in there. Uh, Relly and I played a few games that we, you know, have at home or have seen but haven't played yet. And we got to play those. We played Jenga with strangers, which was pretty cool, yeah. <laughs> honestly. But there was all sorts of other games, too. You know, the ones where they've got the figurines. Oh, oh sure. Yeah, like miniatures and stuff. Yeah. And yeah. different strategy games and stuff. Oh, and, Paul would have been all over it. Paul loved him some strategy. And in high school, you know, I knew the guys who were playing those games and, and sure. Risk and oh, yeah. whatever other games. There's bajillions of other guys my like age Warhammer were playing. Yeah. Stuff like that. 
and, yeah. and you know, then there, I'm sure that there was probably a D and D game or two hanging out in oh, the back. Yeah. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but it was a very large everyone. room and it was, yeah. it was very cool to see all kinds of different people in there. And there was rooms that had different anime playing, uh, oh, fun. you know, in little conference rooms so that people could go in and sit and watch, you know, a studio Ghibli film or, uh, Yuri on ice or whatever it was that was playing over there. I Aurelia is never interested in that. So we get stuck mm-hmm. doing games, um, and vendor hall and that's about it. So she doesn't really let me sit in on any panels, but I was looking at the information on the panels and there's some really cool stuff going on there too. Yeah. Um, so people who have gotten really good at creating their own comics or their own art, um, YouTubers, networkers, uh, voice actors, um, people who, who are literally cosplaying for a living. That so, would be crazy cool to see anybody like that, you know? Yeah. And then there was the, the masquerade where people got to show off their cosplays and sure. the effort that some of these people put into it is, is very admirable. There's just mm-hmm. so much going on and um, a spattering of something for everyone. I remember last year there was a very prominent voice actor that was there. I can't remember who it was, but I saw a friend of mine who I had literally almost never talked to outside of Starbucks before, but I saw him in line <laughs> for, um, to get a signature from someone. And I remember being like, who? <laughs> I don't it was know. a big deal. Everybody else was standing in line too. It was, it was yeah. obviously something that they were interested in doing. And it was just really cool to be there among, you know, your people to, to yeah. know that this was a safe space. It was, um, a place where people are dressed up and really immersed in the things that they love and know. And I'll be honest, there was a lot of cosplays there that I had no idea what they were dressed as. Oh, um, I bet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think only... any convention is going to have that too. Like yeah. no matter if it's an anime or if it's a regular comic con or, or mm-hmm. Tesla con or anything like there's going to be stuff. You're like, what? Right. what is that? Yeah. Well, I'm always coming up with ideas in my head as to like how to make a, a character, how to reimagine a character, how to sure. reimagine something into something else so that it fits, you know, Tesla con or it fits. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Renaissance. The or, yeah. Right. But what was cool is that not only was it anime cosplays, but you were also seeing, you know, other animations, uh, Disney cosplays and, um, you know, there was pro- there was quite a few Marvel cosplays in there, um, different video games. And I, I was watching a YouTube video of this guy who mis- incorrectly goes to conventions and names people's characters wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> That'd be hilarious. <laughs> so he goes up and he goes, oh, hey, so-and-so from, from whatever – Oh yeah, do that line. Oh, you're Gandalf from uh, yeah. from from uh, Star Wars, right? Yeah, and like <laughs> half of them really agree with them, and they're like, yeah, yeah, hoo, hoo, hoo. <laughs> and then the other half are like, nope, not me, nope, that's not who <laughs> I am. And then they'll correct him, and he just continues on his charade. But oh, um, there was a point where Aurelia saw a a woman dressed as a character from She-Ra and Aurelia only knows She-Ra from Netflix, like the reboot. She doesn't know it from, uh, you know, He-Man when I was young. She remembers it from um, From watching Netflix by herself Uh, sometime in the past month or so. (laughs) But she was walking down the aisle opposite us and she veered off in front of this woman and stopped her dead in her tracks, scared her even. <laughs> oh. I was like, can I get a picture? And she didn't. <laughs> and that's kind of the thing too at conventions, you know, yeah, you, pictures you want, of people. yeah, you get to admire other people's cosplays. So you, yeah. it, it, the, the amounts of pictures I have of Aurelia with random people dressed as other characters and random <laughs> characters is immense in my phone. Um, 
but it's really cool because she she was like, yeah, absolutely. And she did a pose with her lobster like arms. And um, uh, Aurelia got a couple pictures. And then I was like, who is she? <laughs> What's going on here? And I, I still don't think we know the name, but Aurelia was like, oh, she's from She-Ra. She's like a like an anti-hero. It was it was so great. It was it was just the best. Um, that's awesome. But that's kind of the thing, you know, you, you kind of walk around trying to figure out if you know who that person's dressed as or, yeah, or what yeah. they could possibly dress as. And the creativity and the just awesomeness that these people put into what they're dressed as is, is like mm-hmm. my favorite part. Yeah, it's so cool. And like I've... I've full disclosure. I've never been to a convention like that before, <laughs> but I would totally love to, and I would totally love to just get all in and dressing up into a certain, you know, character and you know do the whole cosplay thing. Just it would be so much fun. It would bring me back to my theater days in high school mm-hmm. when I was like, you know, I would dress up as the whatever character I was playing, and it, it's just so much fun to to do that. Right. Well, and, and, you know, like I've never managed a full cosplay either. Um, I decided I was going to try and throw together some kind of Valkyrie at a ball kind of thing for the charity ball. And I, I'm pretty sure I mostly failed, but I had a really oh, good time I, trying I to design a picture, it. picture and I thought it looked really good. <laughs> But, but I don't you know, know what you exactly envisioned in your brain either. So. Right, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. It'd be nice to be 50 pounds lighter and well, wearing... Cosplay is no, no body oh, type. That That's is fine. very true. And there is a lot of, of media out there about that as well. You know, not... Yeah. Um, uh, cosplay is no, no body type or skin color. Right. It's, it's all about you and how you imagine it to look with yeah. what you're given. Um yeah, so, so <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. I, I've been schooled. Um, <laughs> this is the one who right, the one who's right. never cosplayed before. <laughs> but I mean, you have a whole brood now. You could. I do though. We, we can make our own like, Pokemon up. family. Well, okay, so we, we, Halloween was fun because I dressed up as a Pokemon trainer, and oh. then I'm like, oh, I could dress them all up like Pokemon. Yes, but we didn't. We oh. ended up being. Well, but Ari, that's kind of part of it, you know. There, you know, there were totally like, some some um, uh, Pokemon trainers, and I think there's even a like a Pokemon convention that I saw. I bet there is. I mean, well, there's Pokemon Go conventions. Why wouldn't there be regular Pokemon conventions? Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but what I thought was really interesting, you know, especially with that, is um, you can you can dress your whole brood up as yeah. people. I remember when Aurelia was really little, I wanted to dress her up as a chocobo really badly. <laughs> um, you know what a chocobo is, right? No, but I giggled anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a yellow bird type thing okay. with really long legs in Final Fantasy games. Oh, okay. Um, all right. I've never but, played Final Fantasy, so I... Right. Oh, all right. Uh. Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> it's it's really cute, and I really wanted to dress Aurelia up as one, but it wouldn't have made sense if I was just not dressed up as anything. So, uh, of course, the challenge was trying to figure out a cosplay for myself, yeah. and that never came to fruition, um, and a lot of the ideas floating around in my head don't come to fruition. I'm hoping this year I will dress up as like the new doctor and the Valkyrie Ooh, costume that I want to do. And, you know, Aurelia is obsessed with Swir- squirrel girl now. So I'm going to have <laughs> to try and put together Captain Marvel. If I end up doing that, I don't even know all of these things, all kinds of cool ideas floating around in my head, but you could literally dress up as any of those things at a convention like anime Milwaukee and someone yeah. will know what you are or have a really good idea or just be super appreciative of you putting the time and effort into dressing up as something, that thing. Yeah. And, you know, it's always been my fantasy to have someone stop me and be like, Oh, can I get a picture? Cause I so want to be in random people's pictures. Right. I mean, that that would be super (laughs) cool though. Be like, Hey, I took a picture with someone. (laughs) They recognized my costume. Right. Well, eh, it's it's like, it's... it's like validation for your efforts. Right. And I, I'm sure that that's what a lot of this is too. You know, we could talk forever about conventions like that being a party to people being full of themselves, you know, because. Sure. Yeah. 
<laughs> I've taken a lot of sociology classes, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of them talk about uh, the culture around social media and the culture around um, our narcissistic tendencies. And they, they really being wanting to be in other people's pictures is kind of a, a narcissistic thing when you think about it. Yeah. But it's, at a convention like that, it's a little different. It's more about right. being among people who also appreciate the same things that you appreciate. Exactly. And there's nothing wrong with wanting validation for something you worked really hard at. Right. No, yeah, exactly. Um, but, you yeah. know, there are people who make make a living off of going yeah. to these conventions and putting together their cosplays. And mm -hmm. there are a few YouTubers that, I, that Aurelia knows and loves that, are into that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, and there's a lot of streamers on Twitch who will like, that's their thing is they stream making their cosplay costumes and, and they'll, they'll make every single aspect of it. They'll get the, the craft foam and the, and the plastic materials and they'll, they'll go to town. And yeah. And I, I bet they're like super, super great at like giving advice and yeah. Um, showing people how they did everything so that others can recreate it too. Exactly. That's, that's something that's that I cool always thing. have appreciated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That they, they aren't selfish with their skills. <laughs> right. I mean, why else would they stream it in front of people, right. you know, like they'll, they'll stream themselves like literally from scratch, making an entire costume over a period of time. I'm like, that's impressive, but I never would have thought of using that material to make that item, you know, mm -hmm. like it's, it's, their creativity and imagination pulling different things together to make a final product is right. cool. And, you know, I've always thought about what it would be like to send Aurelia to a convention like that um, because she, you know, goes to a private school mm -hmm. and she doesn't have the same kind of immersion as um, kids in a public school would. Um, but there a lot of the programming was very family oriented. Children's programming actually is a, a room that you can go in and nice. um, make soot sprites uh, last year <gasps> or, sprite yeah, that was really cool. Um, I didn't, I didn't manage to go in there this year, but in the past, you know, they've had coloring and different art projects and different things you can do with your kids um, kind of to just rest and regroup. And there were food trucks downstairs where you could get bubble waffles with ice cream inside and oh, awesome. um, pizza and different Milwaukee Yum. walk stuff, soda that was refillable this year from a really Ooh. amazing company. So, you know, there was, there was a little bit of something for everyone. Like yeah. it was really fun um, to, to see how it's evolved and how it's changed. I did speak to someone who's been to a few different, um, anime conventions because I've only ever been to this one. And she, uh, had specifically gone to, um, one that's a little bit, a bit smaller than anime Milwaukee, but then there's also ASEN down in Chicago. And I remember going to that one a few years ago and just being overwhelmed by how massive it was. And uh, she said, that's kind of the same thing. I um, think I had some friends that went to, was that one earlier, like maybe this past fall in Octo in Chicago? It, it is in Chicago. Um, I can't remember what time of year it is. I want to okay. say it's in May. But I could, I could be mistaken. I'm not sure. <laughs> I had I had some friends, you know, the the friends I'm talking about. Yes. They were at Anime Milwaukee as well. I'm talking about were... the same friends. Okay. <laughs> there we go. So those are the friends. So those same friends, um, they she, Stephanie, and her husband, Ezekiel, they have two kids. And so they cosplay as a family, which I love. They were sending pictures to me and my right, other friends. Right, which is why it. I was talking to you about how you would have your own brood. You could, I totally you could would, totally though. make that happen. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of brood, um, yet yeah, we're adding to it. Yay! Surprise! <laughs> um, baby number four is on the way, so <laughs> yay! I'm... I expect to see pictures of your stomach painted as a Pokeball at some point. Oh, is that how we're doing it this no, time? No, it's not. Oh, okay. It'll be fun. Yeah, I don't. I don't plan on painting my belly. Not that time of year at all. So. Oh no, goodness! Yeah, I'm doing if it July. Was October, I would expect. If that. it were, yeah. Well, yeah, I was doing October with with our second, our son. However, I was also teaching high school at the time, and I was not <laughs> about to 
uh, hit my belly for anybody <laughs> at that point. <laughs> <sighs> okay. But yeah, so baby number four is due in July. So y'all can look forward to some, um, some notifications about that in July. You know, we'll be, we'll be sharing um, player four. <laughs> mm -hmm. We can refer to baby as player four. Um, yeah, we're excited. Okay, so um, they dress up as a brood. Yes, they do. As an entire family. It's great. And well, and so Stephanie has a sister named Anne and she just got married. Her husband is Danny and they all like have a combined cosplay that they mm -hmm. dress up as from the same anime, I believe. Right. Yes. I don't know what they dressed up from. I don't know either. Okay. I'm, I'm sure she could tell me, but yes. I don't remember what it's called, but I know they told me at one point. I'm sorry, <laughs> Steph. I, I don't remember. <laughs> Our episodes are brought to you by Squadcast, and we're so excited to announce that they are now out of beta and fully released. With each of us living in a different time zone, Squadcast makes it easy for us to record and still make it sound like we're in the same room. Use our code, all caps, talk nerdy, for 50% off your first month of Squadcast. Check out our affiliate link on our show's page at publichousemedia.org. Needless to say, though, that's that's the cool part about it, too, is is uh, when people are able to dress up as an entire uh, group from an anime and yeah go together. And then they also have things called cosplay meetups at cool. Anime Milwaukee, where they do major group pictures of all the people dressed up from a certain anime oh, cool. or a certain so thing. So they've got people. You yeah, get all yeah. Them. That's mm -hmm. fun. Right, so they've got all the Sailor Moon people, all the uh, Disney princesses, all the Star Wars characters. Nice. You know, there was all the Marvel people. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's cool. And sometimes the the photographers are so cool that they also have them all like do poses, or uh, you know, all the villains will uh, be in some kind of stance where they're being a uh, defeated by the heroes of whatever that oh, sure. yeah. is. So That's it's great. it's really fun to, you know, view or to go look over the, the railing and see them doing that too, because they, um, they have a really good time with it. And yeah. there are times where you know that your group is going to be uh, getting their picture done then. So lots of fun. I'm sure that there is some way to get those pictures distributed and all that good stuff. Yeah. I, I, can, I would never, imagine... The convention would have some way to say, like, click here for the right. group you were in or whatever. Right. And, of course, in the next couple of weeks, I'm expecting to see a whole bunch of that come out, too, you know, where they're, oh, yeah. they're wrapping it up and talking about how many people showed. Sure. Yeah, all the stats, all the... Mm -hmm. And yeah. being part of the of press was, was cool, too, because I'll get the follow-up emails for that as well. So I'm really excited. Sure. That's awesome. To have been a part of that. Because mm -hmm. it just gives you a different perspective on the different things that they, they had to do. So I wanted to also just mention, you know, that they, they did have a lot of the, the children's programming and the family-friendly stuff at Anime Milwaukee. But then they also have programming later on in the day. You know, once the kids go to sleep, they've got an 18-plus panels and discussions that come oh, out cool. and talk about more adult-oriented topics. And then there's also, there was Anime and Psychology was a panel that I kind of wanted to go to. Ooh, that that would be cool. I thought that would have been really cool. So hopefully they'll have that again next year so I can go. But they also have, you know, Makeup 101 was was a really cool <gasps> panel that I wanted to go to. And For just, like cosplay stuff? Yeah, really <gasps> diverse and yeah. everyone. Um, just a really cool spattering of different things to do and different interesting um, aspects of, of the whole genre, the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I was, I was really impressed with uh, finally getting a chance to look at all of that and the, the opportunities that were there and I'm sure are going to continue to grow. Yeah. I it's hope just so. really exciting for me. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. And, but like being there without having like a responsibility to follow through, you know, like, like since right. you were there at staff before you had to like do your job and stuff. And now mm -hmm. you're just like freedom to do what you want to do and see what you want to see. Right. They did have um some really cool um, DJs that I think are supposed to be very well known, not my kind of music. So unfortunately I wasn't terribly interested, but this was the first year that they had a visual Japanese band called Acme there. Okay. And that was, uh, they're, they're a, like a glam rock band. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah, and this was like their their first overseas concert. Whoa! So it was That's really yeah, it was really neat. They they did a um, extra special performance at the masquerade that I caught. Just like some of the coolest stuff. But you know, I'm so used to like listening to K-pop music, being into that. That this this was a different sound for sure. Sure. But also, you know, it's it's about the look. It's about the the visuals. So really neat stuff going on with them and and with Anime like Milwaukee. They- so when you say visuals, was did they have like a lot of um, like screens to display while they were performing, or was it more like them, uh, like the way that they were on their as the stage presence? Or... Yeah, both. Um, okay, I think sort of like Kiss, but anime ish. Sure. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I can don't sue me if I'm very wrong. So anybody who's listening and, and says that I'm like way off that that's fine. I, <laughs> I love to be corrected. Um, so I, I may be way off it. This is just sort of the impression that I got from the videos that I was able to see. So, you know, they were very, it, it was very exciting for them to be at anime Milwaukee and it was a really cool thing for them to be there. And it's, not something I'm used to seeing. Just some some really cool stuff going on that's that's different than previous years. Yeah. So maybe maybe who well, if you're not familiar guys, check out the band Acme. Yes. It's A C M E. The like the Acme Anvils. The right. Wiley Coyotes. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, we can just look up that. Maybe we'll share a video or two of theirs just so you guys have an idea of like what it is. And, and you know, of course, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm used to the K-pop. So I'm used to BTS sure. and I'm used to different music, different stuff. A different sound. Which, yeah. I'll have to listen to that because I've listened to just some K-pop. I'm not like super into it, but I've heard some and I've enjoyed it. Right. And I've never, I don't know if I've ever listened to anything that's quite like what you're describing. So right. I'm interested. And then I, I did want to briefly talk about just the... The differences in cosplay too. It was mentioned to me that even though a lot of the programming and panels and things are uh, family friendly, obviously there's still that aspect of uh, cosplay being whatever it is that you're comfortable with cosplay. Right. So there's still the opportunity for skin to be shown where you might not want to be seen so much skin being shown. But that's also part of the acceptance culture as well, is knowing Mm -hmm. that the amount of skin someone else wants to show doesn't have to be the amount of skin you want to see, but you still have to be okay with that and, you know, turn around and move on. A movement going on about cosplay not being consent. You know, there's a lot of people that will either, you know, dress up like it accurately as an anime character. And we all know that there are some anime characters that have, that do show a lot of skin. And, you know, just because they dress up that way doesn't mean they're asking for anything. I mean, they're probably not, actually. But also the concept of asking someone to take a picture as well. Yeah. You know, just because no, you're exactly. dressed up as a character does not mean that you want your picture taken yeah right exactly like you mentioned like you'd you would want to be in pictures with people but somebody might not want to be and it's always a great idea to ask first because you never know right a lot of um it looks like a lot of the cosplay is not consent uh movement is as well talking about specifically harassment um centered around cosplay so even though you are um visually accurate as far as how much skin is showing Mm -hmm. doesn't mean someone can put their hands on you or right put their face near your skin that kind of thing is yeah is not okay ever it's really important to make sure that you're comfortable with what you're displaying but also that others are um respectful respectful and that you're you are still as comfortable as you can possibly be because you know right, some exactly. some of the characters, um, not even just in anime, but also in Marvel and DC, and and even in some video games too. Mm-hmm. A lot know? of these characters are very sexualized. They're very cosplayers want to portray them accurately, but also not be putting themselves not be uncomfortable in uncomfortable doing it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Don't right. want to put themselves in a situation they're going to regret. 
Exactly. Or feel and they shouldn't bad be worried are. about that. You know, right. as far as cosplay being an artistic portrayal, it right. it shouldn't be it shouldn't be as scary as it as it has been for some. So exactly. exactly. I was excited to not see anything um that really scared me. So it, especially sure. anime like, Milwaukee made you this worry year. About someone. Right. Especially yeah. being being with Generations Against Bullying and mm-hmm. Cosplay is Not Consent. I thought it was really cool that there was this all encompassing acceptance aura about this Every, weekend. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Because I think, like, especially at smaller ones like this, I feel like people, it's easier to be more comfortable because there's not a bajillion people. You're probably not as smushed together as you would be at one in like Seattle or Chicago. Right. But, you know, I, I did notice, too, that being there as press and just wearing my normal Anime Milwaukee T-shirt, the, the people mm-hmm. come up real close to you. You know, they eh. they walk real fast behind you. Everybody is trying to get to wherever they're going. <laughs> well, sure. I bet. And, you know, your your personal space is your personal space, but it's not. It's not as big. It's when not as big not... as you might want it to be sometimes. <laughs> when you're not staff. <laughs> right. It's just something to, you know, to remember is that cosplay is about um, acceptance and art and putting your voice out there, putting yourself out there. And I, I was just super excited to see all of that encompass this past weekend. That's really awesome. Yeah. It, it just makes me want to go to conventions more. Right. More, we'll get you, you know? there. Yes. Probably after this baby, there. but you know. Yeah, somehow <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to figure out what we're gonna what we're gonna be now. <laughs> yeah, we've come up with so many different ideas now, and I'm like, I have no idea. How, what, what do you <laughs> What do you do with four children? <laughs> oh, just to make, uh, give me some time. I'll come up with Pokemon. something. We'll figure it out. We'll <laughs> figure it out. Yeah, Pokemon. Um, we we love League of Legends. We haven't been playing that very much lately, but the characters, the champions in that game have a lot of diversity. Sure. Um, Harry Potter is always a fun one, too. Mm-hmm. We've done, I mean, we've dressed up as Harry Potter characters before. Um, I mean, our son Emmett's first costume ever, he was like two weeks old. He was a mandrake. So yes. it was adorable. Yes. Ugh. It was so cute. Um, I forget what we dressed up our daughter as this year. Our baby. The baby daughter. Our youngest was oh she just had a little little like costume she was a ladybug it wasn't <laughs> as nerdy but we called it so okay there's a character from League of Legends called Timo and there's a skin for this character that's a bumblebee costume so that's what our son dressed up as he was he was Bimo and there's also um, a variant of Bimo called or that's a ladybug variant so we just kind of said she was the ladybug Bimo but. Yeah, you know, I remember we kind of made that. it. We made it a little nerdy, and then um, our oldest Ariana was Batgirl. She was super excited to be Batgirl. She had the she had the bat mask and every. I'm pretty sure it was a Batman bat mask, but you know it's whatever. <laughs> right. And she loved it. She had a lot of fun with that. She still does. My goodness, she still puts it on, and she's like, "Oh, whenever, whenever Emmett wears this outfit, I have to be Batgirl." I'm like, "Okay, yeah. I'm glad you love it. It's great. You have fun with it." Thanks for getting nerdy with us today. Um, if if you guys have ever been to conventions and you want to share maybe your cosplays with us or um, an experience you've had at a convention, go ahead and let us know about it. Um, and if you have a, co- a suggestion for our family cosplay, I'm all ears. Um, but yeah, <laughs> we, we would love to hear from you guys. Um, also, Lindsay's going to be sharing her, her shirt with yes, us. Yes, of course I am. She's super jazzed about it, and so are we. And um, I, I'm going to be getting some some of our merch, too. So definitely look for that and check out our merch because it's awesome. Um, and because you want to. <laughs> Who doesn't want a shirt that says Talk Nerdy to talk Me Talk Nerdy it. to Me. Or We Talk Nerdy to You because it's yes. both. We have both, and it's great. So, yeah, I definitely need to get the other one, too, for sure. Because right, not yeah. only do I want others to talk nerdy to me, but I definitely want everyone to know that I talk nerdy to them. Exactly. And then, you know, you can just have all sorts of fun conversations. It's it's great. I'm actually, I think I want to get the tote bag and use it as like a library book bag. Yes, definitely. And, like talk nerdy to me. And that's my tote bag for the library. Well, anyways, that's all we've got for you today. And so with that, I'm Emily. And I'm Lindsay. And thanks for getting nerdy with us today on Beauties and Headcanons. <laughs>